You are listening to Word to Words, the Poets Podcast, where two poets come together to share their love for words and those who use them creatively. Before we start, make sure you subscribe to our podcast and also follow us on IG, Facebook, and Twitter, all at Word to Words, so you will never miss a word from us. Now, let's begin the show. Hello, hello, beautiful people. I am Tony Two Eyes, the entrepreneur poet. And I am Zara Kalima, the community poet. And this is Word to Words. Welcome to our first episode. You yes. guys are here with us. We finally got here. This came out of a few conversations through the past year and our wacky dynamic. Um, and you'll find out what I mean. But we decided we didn't want to be stingy with the world to keep it to ourselves. So we're here to share with you. <laughs> we're going to go over words. We're going to spit some poems. We're going to talk about stuff happening in the community. You know, all things poetry. This is this is where we're going to share our love of words and the people. But let's start with the episode. Start the episode with word of the episode. What's the word oh. of the episode, Tony? So... As the title of the podcast states, word, and that's going to lead us to other words. So the word of to the, the episode today is inveigle, and it's a verb, and it means to persuade someone to do something by means of deception or flattery. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually use it in a sentence. So. I'll start us off and let's say, I inveigled my teacher to actually give me straight A's by actually threatening to share their IG pictures with them doing something that they should not have been doing. <laughs> Let me find out you were that stupid. <laughs> So, you know, that's how I got into Columbia, you know, you oh, had, to okay. do some, had to do some things. <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, so I'm a political poet, supposedly, right? So, you know, I mean, right now, what just happened? The new voting laws that was being pushed got um, voted down. So mm. I think uh, a certain party inveigled some judges. <laughs> and, oh. <laughs> and to not letting everyone be able to vote. Mm. That, would that work? <laughs> that that worked. That worked. That worked. They inveigled. <laughs> so um, that word, put it in your the source in your mind, um, and make sure that you you know expand your vocabulary at all times. So, so wait, we let do me spell it for people just in case they don't know how it's oh, spelled. Yes. They can't see it. We're looking at it. <laughs> you know, I they'll get they have to I edit that out. I N V E I G L E and bagel. Again, that's I N V E I G L E. That sounds like a tune, but I'm not going to go there because <laughs> <laughs> we have more of the show to do. So, our next part of this show. Now, also, I just want to make sure that we understand what this word of the episode is for. It's not just to expand your vocabulary, but we are also going to challenge ourselves to use that word somewhere in the episode, as well as at the end where we are actually doing an impromptu Don't, don't, don't tell everyone the secret oh, yet. I'm Let's sorry. I'm sorry. Episode. Jump in the head. Sorry. Okay. Oh. Well, anytime you hear the word, you know, we can feel the energy and you know how poets, we like to hear snaps. So wherever you are around the world, in your car, wherever, make sure that you keep your, your, your hands on one hand on the wheel and then just give a little snap every time you hear in vagal. Okay. So let's move on. So clearly I'm not a driver. I just want to say, if you could see my face, I said two and five. And I was like, that's not two and five. Um, I do have a driver's license, but I'm a New Yorker. 
Uh, so um, mm, today, in, ev in every episode, we're going to acknowledge a poet that's doing something, did something is incredible. Um, and so I felt it was only right to start this episode and this, this whole podcast acknowledging a great that we just lost. So um, the poet we see or we saw in this case is Mums the Schema, aka Craig Mums Grant, aka Sir Mums a lot. Um, he, if y'all don't know who he was, and you call yourself a spoken word artist, you're probably standing on his back as that of many others. So Mums the Schema was born in '68, and he's from the only borough worth mentioning. Bronx, New York. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, listeners. Please, please don't mind her. You're going to hear a lot of this. So just be prepared to <laughs> see X's or hear X's being formed by arms. <laughs> just imagine the X if you're not watching us. Um, just imagine. And for all of you Bronx, Bronxers, yeah. what do y'all call it? What do you call each other? What? What do you call each other? Bronxers? Bronxites. 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 Yeah. There we go. So uh, for you, you know, put up your X's when you hear it. <laughs> yes. So that said, Mums the Schema. So he is, he was a brilliant, brilliant poet. And in fact, he got his, his film screen cred up when he was on the show Oz. So, and the character's name was Poet. Um, but he actually helped write some of the, the, those um, pieces that he was doing. And for me, growing up, the moment I saw Poet on the screen, I was like, who is that? And I was just like, how we are on HBO that everyone's watching and there's this Poet who is killing it. I just wanted to see Poet perform. Like, I didn't even care about what the rest of the episode was about. And I actually liked Oz, but I needed to see Craig do his thing. And this is how you know Craig is amazing. I didn't know, I don't know people's real names. I don't know names. I don't keep names in my head. It's terrible. But when I saw him on the train, I was like, oh my God, it's moms. Do people know that that's moms on the train? Like, I don't get starstruck because I'm in New York. We see stars all the time. <laughs> but I sat there on the D train, like, oh my, like, mom, that's, does anybody, does anybody know that that's moms? Like, does anybody know who's on the train with us right now? And I, I just, everything <laughs> my cool. And instead of being able to approach him because I had a question for him, I ended up writing a poem because I didn't know what else to do. So, and he started writing. So maybe he was writing about me, seeing him. I don't know. We're going to hope, whatever. Um, <laughs> by accident, I ended up in a Facebook friend of his in 2020. Um, and unfortunately, I met him online at a time where his mom was really ill or more so COVID in nursing homes. I'm not going to go any more details into that. But just seeing him, I mean, I don't know how you even friended me, how you agreed to friend me, but just seeing him as a real person. And when I saw Kevin Powell mention that he was gone, my only initial response was no. Like I had no other response. Like it wasn't even like, I really typed no. And that was it. And then I had to go back to his page and find out it was confirmed. Um, but, and Kevin Powell would never put wrong information out there like that. But still, like that's how hurtful it was that poet's gone, that mums is gone, that mums the schema is gone. And this man, let me tell you how brilliant he was. He he was a he was not just a poet. He was a poet. He was a playwright. He was an actor. So he has connections. Like my one of my friends was like, oh my gosh, you were just doing his show out in, I don't remember where she's from, but she's from Eastern Europe. Europe. Mm -hmm. So they over there doing his show. And so even at the memorial, one of the memorials for him, there's all these videos from there saying like wonderful things to him in their native tongue and in English support, like praising this man. Like you have, if you were ever on a open, on a, ever a spoken word artist, if you ever watch Death Poetry Jam, you should be thanking this man because Death Poetry yeah. Jam really started because of mums. Wow. So check out his portfolio of work, listen to his poem about cockroaches. Um, <laughs> I, I, I just saw, you know, for the gamers out here, Grand Theft Auto, he was actually, he, he got into two Grand Theft Autos. Um, the number four, the Lost and, and Damned, he was Deshaun. And then Grand Theft Auto 4, I guess in 2008, and then what, 
and then that one was in 2009. He was the crowd of Liberty City. So, like, he he's he has a diverse catalog of, and he was also in Birdman, which actually won or was nominated for an award. He was in in those in that I movie mean, as well. He, so, he he passed away while going to record something. So yeah. he's just like if you if you but even in his sphere of influence like if you were a tag around like me who he didn't know who I was you still were impacted by this man he was a giant and so you know and being at his club being at his memorial seeing his partner be there and then like uh oh gosh what's his name my brain just see this is why you don't trust me with names this is why you don't trust me with names most deaf's partner who who do you normally see with most deaf Talib Kweli. Talib, Talib Kweli. Yeah. yeah. Talib yeah. Kweli was even doing a dedication to him. Like yeah. everybody knows, knew who this man was. He was a force in, in poetry. He was a force in hip hop. He was a force in the Bronx doing good things. And so I thought it was only right to dedicate the WCU um, to him and his memory because there's no way that we can move forward without acknowledging who's, who's back to you, Stephen, not who was propping us up. And yeah. he made, a huge way for us poets. And, so. and I just want to say, you know, you never know what type of impact you're making on not only just your community, but also a generation. Mm -hmm. You know, he was in a time where, you know, poetry was, was just, you know, you had rap, but you also with rap, there was this kind of balance with poetry as well, because you had, you know, Def Jam poetry, poetry slam you also had Def Jam that was into the to, to rap as well and and so these things impacted a whole generation I, I saw he was also at Narican you know Narican, you can actually yeah, go he there the, he's one of the slam poets yeah and you can go there and he he was there at one particular point and that was back in 19 1996 I see but you know this this is something that is more than just you know, oh, I put my poems together and I go to open mics, you know, you can actually be laying the foundation for others to come after you. So never, never, never take that lightly. Because know? here's the thing, and I'm, I know this is, this is to moms, but I'm just going to take it even fuller circle, right? And we talk about moms being a giant in which many of us, like many of us who eat, like when he was on Oz, what it meant to me to see him doing that I just wanted to know how to do it myself or how I even get close to being there. But yeah. when we look at Brandon Lee, who he's doing the same thing. He's making yeah. the same moves. Yeah. Similar moves. Like he just announced that he's recording a film that he's been working on for years. Yeah. So he's making, and I mean, and I, when I, when I saw Brandon's thing, I was like, yo, he saw William in out here. Cause Saul Williams was like, I mean, he's still crazy. Right. But Saul Williams, even though he does albums, Mm -hmm. And it has heavy music under him. If you go to his concert, he will tell you, I'm just a poet. <laughs> he will say, I'm a poet. Like, I've been at his concert and people started fighting. He's like, yo, yo, this is a poetry show. Like, <laughs> this is not where you do that. You know? <laughs> so, place. Like, Saul Williams, but Saul Williams went and did Slam. Oh, Slam. That's the movie, Slam. Mm -hmm. He did Slam. And He's got his whole music thing. And like, now you have Brandon Leak doing it and they're all building. And actually Saul was at um, Mum's Memorial too. Um, so like, just we're all stuck. We're all building on someone before us. Mm -hmm. So you don't know who you're impacting, but yeah, we also always, while we don't know who we're impacting next, we also need to always make an homage and acknowledge those who are before us. Yes. So Mum's mm -hmm. is poet we see this, this episode. Great. So now you now you know another another legend if you didn't know him before. So now you can go Wikipedia, go research. I always say if you don't know something, always go and and, and at least Google it. <laughs> and I, I mean you know, at least Google it and see what this, comes up. This video is all over YouTube for the work that he's done. But that said. Yes, yeah. Tony, can you can you answer a question for me? Okay. What's inspiring your pen? Inspiring my pen lately. 
Well, you know, we just ended Poetics University. That was the last time that I actually wrote. And, um, but wait, wait. actually I write, I write on a regular basis. So it, what is Poetics it, University though? Oh, Poetics University is a, a po poetry institution that I founded um, back in 2020, right at the beginning of the pandemonium pandemic. <laughs> um, right at the beginning, I wanted to start something that was, that would bring people together despite this you know, time that we were going through and open mics were, were not available. And, oh, well, we were doing them online, but it still wasn't as personal as I wanted um, the, the feeling to be. So decided to start these workshops that I brought in people from all over the world. You know, they joined and, and they, they created together in a group chat, <laughs> you know, and posted to IG. And that's where I met Dar, who is now the vice president of, of Poetics University. So um, that's what Poetics University is. <laughs> and I wanna say thank you, Dar, for, for your, 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 your dedication and commitment to, to that. Um, it has become more than I could ever imagine. So, um, but that, that is Poetics University. And so the last time that I actually wrote outside of like just regular IG pay, uh, posts was for that. But my, my goal right now is to write more on, because I'm called the entrepreneur poet, so I'm writing more on purpose and motivation type of poetry to help people, you know, kind of go towards their goals. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You don't have to be an entrepreneur, but you should have that entrepreneurial spirit, you know, because the, the, we have the entrepreneurial spirit is one similar to Actually, I would say it's it's kind of just business creativity, you know, because when you have a business, you have to be creative. And when you're a poet, you have to be creative as well. So um, I'm, I'm doing doing a lot of of, you know, motivation, inspiration, trying to get people to recognize their purpose. I also have a workshop that I'm going to be talking about purpose driven writing. So getting ready for that, how you can how you can you know, help influence people with poetry and motivate them as well, as well as touch their heart, you know, with the love stuff or move them with the, um, the community side, <laughs> like you. <laughs> so, yeah. No one can be I have a question for you, though, too. Wait, what's that question? What's inspiring your pen? So there's two things that are happening. Um, one... I am currently, even though I'm from the Buttes, um, <laughs> I'm currently in Wisconsin, um, in a Wisconsin? island in the middle of Lake Superior, which I'm really, I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed. There's so many trees around us that I don't actually know where the lake is in relation to where we are. <laughs> I was like, I was gonna sit and stare at the water. There's no water, it's all trees surrounding us <laughs> um, it's very idyllic and beautiful mm. I am not mad at it and you know I know it's getting lighter it's getting darker soon but right now it is 8 51 and there is still some some light out there I mean the sun is clearly set on our side but there's like it's still a little still bit blue still some yeah. blue out there yeah. I'm a little impressed right now <laughs> um so yeah so I'm at a retreat and retreat a workshop. I don't know what you want to call it, but there's a, a writer called Natalie Goldberg who authored the book, Writing Down the Bones. She authored it 35 years ago. Wow. And it sells like it was written yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been studying writing as a form of meditation or I've been doing some part of her writing practice, not the meditation part, but I've been doing some part of her writing practice for almost 20 years. Um, and I met her 12 years ago when her book released. Um, she has multiple books, but I met her when her book, A Friend From Far Away was released. So I'm technically at the workshop, A Friend From Far Away, which is about memoir writing. But we're spending the whole week writing. I have some homework to do before I go to bed tonight which involves writing and I need to finish a book because you can't be a good writer without reading. And um, 
Hold on, say so, that one more. Say that again. You can't be a good writer without reading. Mm. This is what I've been told. So I'm working on upping my reading. It's hard during a pandemic. I gotta say, it's hard to like read because I don't read at home, and now you're forcing me to actually read at home, and that's. I give me my train and I will read. <laughs> But I don't really want to be on a train right now. So, no. yeah. Anyway, so being here, there was something I said in the middle of one of our writing practices today that really um, was like, yo, that's a poem. And it was that I hate writing about Black Lives Matter. And it's just because I've written it to death. And I would love for it to stop being an issue that we need to write about. Mm. So it's... um. I think there's a poem there. I mean, I already wrote retirement plans, but I think there's a different poem yeah. um, in that. So there's that. We'll see what happens. But the other thing that's inspiring my pen, it's not yet. Like, I think it's three more days. I don't really know what the calendar looks like right now. Um, I really feel like I've been here a week and I've been here one full day. <laughs> <laughs> it's felt like a week to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, where's the it's taken i mean i was i've been traveling since saturday today's yeah. monday night but still mm -hmm. <laughs> it felt a lot longer than that i was like it's wednesday right but but when, I, when, when we talked on the video chat like i think it was like 30 minutes oh it wasn't on the video chat it was on live and i was like you're still driving through the lake like <laughs> over the lake <laughs> I, I i guess the pet the the highway was through the lake? So no, the highway. Or was so, it on the side? So, so what happened? Yeah, so I don't even know how we did this, honestly. I, so to get to where we are, this is a remote school in the middle of an island, in the middle of Wisconsin. Um, you have to fly into Minnesota. And apparently you drive from Minnesota into Wisconsin and then you get to some point in Wisconsin and take a boat. So like you could have taken, I think you could take a boat from where we were because the town right, well, downtown is all this like, downtown is right on the lake too. So we were near Lake Superior. Like you could see Lake Superior from where I ate the other day, um, mm. but I don't, we just didn't go across it there. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand what happened. But we, so someone, the person who was in the car with me was like, oh, so we are, um, are we still in Minnesota? He goes, no, we're in Wisconsin already. When do we hit Wisconsin? So we had to drive into Wisconsin, hop on a boat. And then, so we still, essentially we still had to drive two hours. It was an hour and a half to the boat. Mm. <laughs> and then 20 minutes on the boat and then like five minutes to the school. Wow. Yeah, it's, 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 you can reach me by a caravan. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Cross the lake. <laughs> like only Dara can. <laughs> I don't care how you get here. Get, get here. there if you can. When you can. <laughs> when you can. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's been. I, I, I do want to go to that breakdown, but I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's not. But no, so it's a um, but it's a silent retreat. Half of the day is silent. So mm -hmm. the only reason why I can do this is because we're able to talk at night. Mm -hmm. um, we're supposed to keep that energy. So I did a 20-minute sitting meditation right before this. And then I came in and I'm on the screen with you. And then I'm going to go back and do some homework when we're done. So Yo, that's it's a, a whole retreat, experience. man. It's a whole Silence? Experience. Like, yes. we're silent. You don't know retreat until you, like, y'all, re you're retreating and you, with your church group or whatever, y'all talking all the time. But when you can't talk, for a whole, most of the day like that's a retreat because all you have is your mind we're, and, and that's think, the whole point wow. we're from the moment we wake up until 3 p.m which is not even really accurate um 3 p.m is when we go into our second session mm -hmm. so from the moment so the conversation is still controlled until six when we're done um but we don't we talk in the first session talk in the second session but we talk minimally we only talk one germane to the conversation when mm. we're sharing what we wrote but we're not like hey how you doing how'd it go last night like none of that breakfast is silent this morning all you hear was the clinks of spoons and forks against plates um lunch is the same way and then 
we speak again only when spoken to in class for the most the part. Poets Hunger Games. The writers <laughs> Hunger Games. <laughs> like <laughs> and then dinner time essentially is when we're able to have whatever conversation we need to. But the goal is to keep that energy. So some people choose to sit separate because they still want the quiet. And I don't blame them. Um, yeah. I'd be mostly quiet if you and I weren't doing this right now. So <laughs> there's that. Um, but yeah, nice. so so the one other thing I didn't get to say yet, the other thing that's motivating my pen is, you know, next month someone gets a little older. And so that is. Yeah. you don't know who that is? Yeah, it's your favorite Leo. I don't know yeah, how many you have, but it's your favorite Leo. I don't even know them by by by, <laughs> by their size. <laughs> so, but I do your... know one person that likes to roar at me. So when does I her... just decided there was a crazy idea of actually starting a podcast with with her, <laughs> with my lion. <laughs> it makes fun for everybody. It makes fun for everybody. So yeah, so um, oh, we are definitely turning up. <laughs> I mean, because we can, we can actually. We may even release a birthday pot. Our next one may be on your birthday. Depends on what you're doing. I mean, nothing because I'm really not going out. So. <laughs> I go out with you, but like I may have to surprise you and be like, "Okay, we're doing this live in person." Well, okay. that's not a surprise if I say it. Uh, Whatever. Let I'm me not know. Good what at surprises. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So almost every year, I do a thirty poems in thirty days or usually 31 poems in 31 mm -hmm. days for the month of July. So even though I'm here for this purpose and I will be here for the first 10 days or the first nine days, I will, in addition to all the writing I'm doing, because we do a lot of writing prompts to, I mean, we've done pretty much an hour worth of writing in wow. intervals today. Yeah. Um, Cause it's like we did three, 10 minutes and then we did another two 10 minutes and then we had to do another one so yeah like an hour of writing today yeah with our hands with your um, hand, not computers okay. no computers no tablets no phones our hands and so either way i'm gonna also be writing um some poems for your for the, for the 31 and 31 so okay. that's those are the two things that are inspiring my pen at the moment wow well thank you thank you for sharing that um for those listening make sure that you have something that that you're attaching your pen to and sometimes exactly. it may not may not be anything specific but just make sure that you're writing you know exactly sometimes, don't stop writing yeah don't stop so and you'll you'll see what you're attaching your pen to or what you're inspired by so tony i'm really thirsty mm, i got just the thing but you have to brew it first <laughs> so <laughs> this episode is sponsored by dainty co and they are a tea company that's unique because they let you tea to your taste and what do i mean by that so you know how you get the tea bag and you you just just there's stuff already in it you don't know what's in it but you on the box it says green tea with mango roots or something. I don't to say mango root, whatever, mango. <laughs> um, so then you put it in your glass and you drink it. And you think that you're actually being healthy because that's tea. Tea is healthier than whatever alternatives. But tea actually is a traditional or a tradition. Some countries, some cultures actually treat this as a ritual, you know, tea is something that you get involved in. And so this Dainty Co. is trying to bring tea back to the tea experience. And so they give you five ingredients where you can mix and match, uh, mix and match the ingredients however you please to your taste. So they, they, they say, you know, try every ingredient so that you know what the flavors are. And then Start mixing and matching, become a chemist, become an alchemist, and make every cup of tea perfectly to your taste. So thank you, Dainty. If you are interested, please go to Dainty Co. D-A-I-N-T-E-A-C-O dot com. 
and you can order their unique tea blend kits, which again comes with five tubes of whole leaf, loose leaf, sorry, loose leaf tea and botanicals. So please go check them out. Amazing company. Now let's get back to the show. Awesome. I'm mad I didn't bring any with me, actually. <laughs> everyone's talking about coffee. I'm like, what is what is that? I, oh man. I thought about it, but my bag was so close to weight that I'm gonna have to figure out how to like not bring back some stuff. <laughs> like, dress really? up a shirt or two. <laughs> I mean, like, so the last time we did this, we were in we were at a higher altitude, and I realized altitudes impact my joints. And so, and we did a lot more walking because our group was down, our class was so large, we were actually not on campus. So we wow. walked to off campus. And so my knees did not like the elevation. And, and I was like, well, we're in the lake, so the moisture is probably going to kill me. So far, I don't need my cane, but I was like, does my cane need to go home with me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Contemplating the cane. <laughs> Can the cane get there by themselves? <laughs> like, how do I get the cane uh, back to New York without being in my luggage? <laughs> if I put you in this lake. Would you make it to the river? Would you would you make it to the Hudson? <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm like, can I lend somebody a book permanently? I don't know. <laughs> we all read the same books. I can't let you that. So oh, I'm going to have to find a way to not carry... I'm going to have to eat everything in my bag. So I'm working on the Twizzlers right now. Oh, <laughs> Just there we go. That's a, that's a good 12 ounces. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. 10 ounces, bad. 8 ounces maybe. So, so where are we now? We are at, shout out to us. The it's the first, first episode. I'm just like, I'm, I'm enjoying myself. Uh, I know. And like, we're like moving through our timeline really, really ridiculously fast. So yeah. Fill you on taking your time and chatting because nobody knows us. <laughs> how crazy we are. But, um, sir. Oh, where are we at? Words of wisdom? Yeah, where, words of wisdom. That's what I said. Words of wisdom. Oh, you, you did it? say it. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, so, go ahead. Me, you, whichever, who go first? Rock, paper, scissors. No. Okay. You no, want. I was ready to, I was ready to shoot. He always goes with the rock. Because she wants to threaten me. Well, I did tell you about paper. But you always she wants to threaten me. <laughs> no, the paper will will stop, and I was like, yes, it will fly through and get you. <laughs> she's, she's saying that it, it goes through paper. She changes the rules. It's okay. That's Leo's. That's Leo's for you. And yet you still love me and work with me, which is amazing. Can't say I don't. So I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> You do though. It's not just because you're forced to. I can't say I don't, so there's not many options here. I feel so like I'm gonna plead the fifth. You know what, Mr. Two Eyes? That's all I'm gonna say. So oh words of wisdom. So you go first. Words of wisdom. What is something all poets need to know or should know? I mean, the thing that I tell people most often is um, there's an audience for you. Mm. So when people ask me my opinion or like what they should do about writing, and I'm not really my opinion on their work, but no one else's opinion, no one else's opinion really matters because somebody's going to need what you say. Mm. So it doesn't matter if I like what you're doing or not, right? Like, you know, I am a sci-fi reader. If you ain't giving me a sci-fi book or something to help my craft, whatever that craft is, probably not going to read it. We're going to be honest. So just because you, you wrote urban fiction, that's good for you. There's a whole market for it. I'm not the market, mm -hmm. but somebody needs it, right? Somebody needs erotica like and you know like whatever your thing is so my my words of wisdom is your audience will appear so don't even worry about it make a good product right for sure make a good product 
but you know your words will your audience will appear and somebody needs your work so just get it out there don't stop don't let anyone else dissuade you do what you need to go right hmm. and go share yeah all good things i hope you all come to our podcast with a pen in hand because we're here to inspire your pen teach you some things let you learn some people that's in the industry doing doing things that you do um, or doing them legendarily. <laughs> um, but you should should always be coming to our podcast to learn something and take something away, whether it is in your mind or on, on paper. So um, my words of wisdom, I know we, we have a lot of new new writers, you know, up and coming writers that you know, trying to navigate what, what this poetry life is like. They, they, they know that they do it for themselves. You know, they know that they have their, jur they, their journal and they write things for, you know, whatever the situation is. If you got dumped, you know, you write what you feel. <laughs> um, if you are in a relationship, you write what you feel, how much you love and, and this and that. And then there, there comes a point where you're like, you know, where, what else can I do with this, this, this gift or this talent? And as we have shared, there are some people that have done some amazing things. We also do some amazing things um, with, with our talent, make things for other people, make opportunities for other people or experiences, or even create books for others to actually, you know, read and then resonate with things um, in the book. Uh, so I would say my advice is to one, find people like you. It's one of the most amazing things when you actually find people that are just like you. I One example that's coming into mind, but when you're actually in recovery from from something um, like a substance, or if you're in recovery, even in a even in a hospital, you know you're around other people that are just like you, and some of the most amazing conversations and some of the most amazing things or experiences come from being around like-minded or people that are in the same situation as, as as you. So find people that are just like you if you don't have those already. Because sometimes it, it gets to the point where you're like, you don't get supported in a dream and then it dies because then you either try to go after other people's dreams or you, you, you try to adapt to whatever environment you're in. But you have control over that. You can place yourself in, in, inside, especially nowadays with the, the internet, phones, all of that. So you can, one, follow Poetics University, join a workshop. That's one way to to basically tap into a community of people that are all around the world have various experiences various backgrounds and you will find someone there that think like you or has been in a situation like you or you know maybe have the same experience with writing like you do so um that's 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 one and then after you find that that support, make sure that you are also looking to learn continuously, indefinitely, no matter what, try to place yourself in experiences where it will improve your writing, whether that is a formal institution like college or as Dara right now, she's at a workshop where she's can't talk from morning to, to night, but that experience is something different that you will never experience anywhere else except for that workshop, most likely, unless you do it yourself. Um, but even that, you know, when you're, again, when you're around like-minded people, everybody that she's around is doing that. So it encourages and it allows the process to help build the, build her up in the ways that this um, teacher, Natalie, um, has designed this, this course. So 
always look for those experiences. Some are free, some you have to pay for, some may even come by way of the phone. So just always look to do that. Um, and those are the two things that I would that I would give you. I can't unload everything. So those are the two that you can walk away with from this episode. So now we're gonna go to the, the dark side. <laughs> so now we, we inspired you. Now we're gonna talk about stuff, stuff that frustrates us some frustrations that we see out in the writing community or in the arts community, things that need to change, things that need to improve from our perspective. So. you first. You want me to start? You want me to start? Huh. Let's see here. One thing, and it's so funny because we haven't really been out you know, I can only go based off of when I was out in, in the midst of it. Um, or I can go based off of IG, um, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> okay, so open mic <laughs> etiquette. <laughs> when you are on an open mic, please do not treat this time as a one-on-one, -on -one, as if you and the host are the only ones in the <laughs> in the open mic, I we we care. People that actually facilitate these things, they care. They want to know about you. But in the open mic scene, there's a time and a place for everything. When it's your turn to go. You introduce yourself because you're not there for the host. You're actually there to share with everybody else. So it's not a conversation between you and the host. They're there to host, to facilitate, to manage, to make sure that, you know, everybody gets up and speaks. But when you go up there and you, and you in the mindset that you're one-on-one -on -one with them, then all it does is now 15 minutes go by and there hasn't been a single poem stated or shared <laughs> and all it has been is your personal life and and i think these things can actually be, be you know they, they can actually happen on the side you know if you're if you're really cool with that person and and you know them you know you you guys go way back you know you can actually pick up the phone and call them after the after the open mic is done but the open mic is not the time to catch up on years that you haven't actually seen them and, and, and or call and use that phone number. So send them a text, you know, catch up with them from time to time. Don't let it be at the open mic on your little slot because host of open mic, we, we actually, you know, we time everything. Everything is a time. You know, we say three minutes, five minutes. Okay. And when you use up that five minutes and you still haven't done a poem and then you get to the poem and that, <laughs> and that poem <laughs> reflects the same time, five minutes, that's 10 minutes that you have taken up on a open mic. <sighs> that just gave me flashbacks to when I was hosted in person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, normally don't do this. This mic is, you know, how's everybody doing today? <laughs> Did they become the host? <laughs> okay, go ahead. That's, 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 that's my frustration. You, you can add on to that if you want or, or, or give us a new one. <laughs> so, you know, I had a different one. But I, I kind of want to stick with you for a second because the part two to what you said also is just do the poem. <laughs> like just, Yo, that, that summarizes everything. I mean, just, just do the just, poem. Because here's the thing. I have literally heard people give these long descriptions about the poem and the poem was shorter than the description. I don't, I, don't the, I don't need the backstory. Give me the poem. You 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 here for just just give me the poem. Like just just 
And I mean, unless you're at a place where you're ex creating an experience, you know, like, I mean, so, and it's funny because, so I've paid for enough Mary J. Blige concerts. What I'm not going to do is pay for another one. Because I realize when she's speaking to the audience, she's not really speaking to the audience. It's so scripted and strict that it's like, it's just a bad segue. And usually that's what happens. It's like, women, have you ever felt the way I'm going down? And I'm just like, you weren't talking to us then. You're just going out. Check, please. We're not having a moment. So I, I don't like that. But it works in poetry. Because mm. I have definitely gone, oh, so remember that first poem I did? Well, here's the part two to that poem or the next thing that happened there. And then continue it there, right? Like just to connect the arch. But that's all you need. I don't need to know your whole family history. If it ain't in the poem, I don't need to know it. I, I mean, you, if it's dedicated to someone, sure. Give me that. You can even give it to me after. And that poem was dedicated to. But like you have, and, it's, and it's, it's so true. I was watching one of the public speaking things and they were saying that we ruined the energy and how we start a public speaking moment mm -hmm. because there's always a tension when you get to the mic, people want mm. to know what you're about to say. Yeah. And then you go, hey, everyone, whether well, you just, you completely destroyed the tension and diffused it. And now we got to get back into where you're going. Yeah. You come in. I mean, this is the brilliant thing about Boy to Boy D, right? He'd be starting anywhere. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I used to talk to him. I'd be like, because yeah. he'll come up to the mic. I'm like, hold on. No, no, no. You're supposed to start from the seat. <laughs> I mean, he just, he's like, oh, my name? Great. But, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but like, but like, he grabs your attention. And the moment you start, hey, everyone, and I'm guilty of it, mm -hmm. but I at least only do, hey, everyone. I may go, this is new work. And that's the only caveat you'll get. You know, this is dedicated to my sister. Mm -hmm. I don't even like to do titles. Like, I mean, Even in it, my it book, depends. I didn't do titles. I know. Well, my titles <laughs> sort of go with, sometimes my titles are actually the first sentence. Yeah. Um, poem. So depending what it is, I keep it. I don't keep it. Um, yeah. I usually do keep it. But like, that's all. It's all. Because you can start. Unclaiming kids. See. Cut, or you could just start with C. Cut, like neither one is really hurting it at that point. But yeah. you come here and say, hey, 15 years ago, I wrote a poem because my boyfriend <laughs> and told me, he called me cute and it made me really annoyed. And then my sister had just died. So I didn't know what I was doing myself. So I ended up writing this poem. So I still perform it. I hope you like it. Ready? It Great. is a haiku. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Word. But even if it isn't a haiku. It just you just ruin all interest. Ain't nobody wants patience you anymore. Yes. So and, and nobody wants to come to your show the same way. Nobody wants to bring you on as a feature the same way. You gotta like give people just what they need. We don't need the backstory because if, if you need to give a backstory to your poem, then you need to go fix your poem. Yeah. If yeah. your poem cannot stand on its own, then there's something wrong with the poem and you don't need the introduction. Unless you're again doing like a book talk mm -hmm. where you're having that type of connection, but you got to know the differences in where you're performing. Yeah. Because if you know your space, mm -hmm. know, know your space, watch what's happening. And if you want to be the one that people remember, then come out there. Your first moment needs to be strong. Because if you start with, hey, everyone, shuffle 16,000 papers. So <laughs> what happened was, oh my goodness, I'm so <laughs> nervous right now. Okay, the first time I've ever performed in life. So I'm just gonna. So then I wrote this poem. <laughs> no, just, hold on. Just give me the poem. And then like, just just give me the poem. <laughs> and they be killing their time. Like if you get if some places you get six minutes. If you get six minutes, you can do. Depending how you write and how you perform, that's three whole poems right there. Yeah, that could if be. If you two. just give me the poem. Yeah, that could be two, or it could just be one, depending on how you do, what you write, how you perform. But, like, you just killed half your time. 
by not, I mean, yes, you say who you are, but what I've gotten to doing is I also want to leave them with a taste. Mm-hmm. I don't say how to find me at the end of the show because by the time I'm done, you're applauding. You ain't even hearing me. Mm-hmm. So I usually am going, I'm Zara Kalima. I'm a community poet. You can find me, yada, yada. And now I'm going to read you the last poem. Yeah. So that when I drop so the you mic, do it. Got you. the mic is done. Mm-hmm. I say thank you and I'm gone. Yo, y'all need to take notes. So, don't, don't, so just, just... Just give me the poem. Just g- exactly. give them a poem. That's the that's actually the name of this episode. Just give me the poem. <laughs> Just give me the poem. <laughs> Cause that's what you're right. Cause that's what I be like when I was hosting. Just give me the poem, please. <laughs> Just give me the poem. Huh. <sighs> so yeah. And you just kill like and you kill a whole vibe. You you just you just just and I know it's a new thing and it's a nervous thing. Mm-hmm. But but you can never go wrong if you just give me the poem. <laughs> you you can't go time. wrong. You, you can't have issues. Just you don't have it. to worry about introductions to yourself. You can do that at the end. And or, even they so, already said your name. Exactly. Most people don't need to know. You don't need to know your whole life. <laughs> like we don't, we don't. And Not I said all. if you're doing a poem about the Bronx, they're gonna know you from the Bronx because you said it was the only borough worth mentioning. I'm just saying. So <laughs> <laughs> wait, I was uh, my, my bad. But I'm saying, like, I don't have to tell you I'm from the Bronx and then read a poem called The Only Borough Worth Mentioning. It, yeah. Just sit here and do the daggone poem. Just just do the poem. Just uh give me so, the poem. I'm I'm not even gonna do my other frustration. I'll just save it to next month. But um, <laughs> well, write it down. So we yeah, can, I'm not gonna remember it. I'm not gonna remember it. I know yeah, what it you, was. And you just gave you know us what? that one. It wasn't supposed to be done. That's what I'm gonna say. What? The other frustration should not have been shared publicly on a podcast. <laughs> so, oh man, that was gonna be that was gonna be. You know which one it was, but maybe I'll save it for another day. Okay. <laughs> that was my my Juneteenth tirade. So, so, I mean, we gotta give another one. You got anything else? I mean, so it was it was Juneteenth, and I'm just going. I'm a, I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna go there. You you want to go there right now? I'm gonna go there because it's still June. So I'll do this real quick. <laughs> so I okay. ended up really for everybody so who put your seatbelt on. <laughs> but for people who know and care about me, or who don't and just are meeting me for the first time, I am African American. I'm a descendant of those enslaved. Everything goes back to North or South Carolina. There are literally slave records that prove my relative, um, Felice, no, Lucinda, no, it is Feliciana. Feliciana Harrison mm-hmm. was my like fifth or sixth great grandmother, um, was in Trinidad and then was in North Carolina. And that's my whole history. And so even though my family is from the Carolinas, so Juneteenth wouldn't have been relevant in that we would have already been free, the message would have already gotten to us. Juneteenth matters to me because of that history. Mm-hmm. And I've always felt, and this is not like, I'm not trying to be divisive, I'm not trying to cause issues. Yeah. But because of the way this world is designed, it is designed that all Black people are the same, even if you're not. Mm-hmm. And when you look at a lot of things that are happening, a lot of scholarships actually don't go to African-Americans. The, for Black people, they go to people from the continent often, um, just, but they're checking off their Black quota. Yeah. So they're not really making amends for an issue inter- nationally, because now you're just bringing in the Black person or the person of color from a different country and checking mm-hmm. off that you've put in somebody of color in there. So you're still bypassing the people that were originally hurt by a lot of policies in this country. Yeah. So. I was very frustrated when I looked at Juneteenth programs that were happening. Um, some of which were doing cultural activities that did not tie to Africans or African-Americans mm. or this country. I'm, I'm still fascinated by some of the choices and dances we chose to do when we weren't doing African-based dances or we weren't doing break dancing. Because yeah. you know, break dancing is born of African-Americans and Puerto Ricans together creating mm-hmm. this art of dancing. Yeah. Um, and so, and this movement. So like that would have made sense to me. 
but we weren't doing things. A lot of places were not putting the culture in which is being celebrated first. Mm -hmm. And so to that end, I was very frustrated when I saw some artists who will blatantly tell you that their families are from the islands or from other places, not America. Even if they're yeah. first generation, yes, we all, we all black, we all going through it. Ain't nobody caring where your ancestry's from when they put a knee on your neck. They yeah. really care where your ancestors from when they shot you in the back and planted the gun. Like they don't care. Like yeah. I'm, I'm very clear about that. So we all in this fight together. But you get to have your cultural celebration from your home country as your mm. liberation day. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be Mexican for their liberation day. I'm not going to pretend to be from Gambia on liberation day. Like I'm going to mm -hmm. congratulate your country for its liberation. But I'm not going to be like, yes, I'm free. <laughs> Ain't got nothing to do with me. We all, <laughs> I'm here with you, but we're not all here together. Like this is not that point. And so there were a lot of people who just happened to have brown skin who were the features at events who did not tie to African-American history. Mm. And so I was very frustrated. I mean, I was so frustrated that I literally got so upset I had to go to sleep yeah. and I like I slept for like three or four hours to just un to try to like undo and I didn't do anything I needed to do until I actually went and met you I had a lot of things on my list I had mm -hmm. none of it and I was like mm, <laughs> we gonna do this another day because I can't do this now yeah I um, think w one of the things I, I just wanted to contribute one of the things that you mentioned um the read shout out to them um, a podcast as well called The Read, they were talking about Michael B. Jordan just released a, a rum called Juve. And it, it's a Trinidad um, <laughs> rum. And he has no heritage or attachment to Juve. And, and a lot of people went on Twitter and there was backlash because of the name. Mm -hmm. And it was like to take a name that was talking about the liberation of a country and now, and he was trademarking it too. So they were like, hold on, how, <laughs> what does this mean for now people that celebrate it, you know? And, and I mean, it, you know, it, when it gets a trademark, it, it's only for America. So it's not like they're taking, they can't use it in their country or anything, but, but this is to the point that you're, that you're talking about. Here is a person that is of African-American um heritage or, or lineage and he's now using someone else or someone else's celebration of freedom to actually make a a um a, a, a rum or whatever or the name of a rum and me as an African American I was like I mean we're black like it it, it it doesn't matter but then I had a conversation with someone and 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 they really it really broke it down just how you're breaking it down. It's like, okay, this is, you're basically profiting off of a name that actually means something. And, and oh, that was the other thing. He also put that it didn't really translate to anything in any other language or whatever. That's what is in the marketing or whatever. But this is what it means to the people. <laughs> so it was like, it was kind of like, not, this was nothing until my, to the rum is now enlightening, you know, heightening this, this celebration or this name. And so, yeah, to your, to your same point, you know, Juneteenth, <clears throat> what does that actually mean? What is that? And, and are that, we celebrating that essence? And that, and that was my, I, I purposefully went to the one event that was not, it happened to be on Juneteenth, but it was not ever nearly marketed as Juneteenth. No. Um, and that's why it was okay for me to go to that, right? Yeah. Because when I was looking at these other places, and I mean, I love the people who were featuring. I love what they, I, yes, I'm here for the people. I'm here mm -hmm. for the Black culture. I'm here for the Latino culture. I'm here for the, I'm here for the culture, whatever that mm -hmm. culture means at this point, right? I'm from the Bronx. Like, even though I'm only Black, I'm like, you, all my neighbors are Dominican. Like, there's a reason why I say Latino. I don't say Latino. Who says Latino? That, that sounds ridiculous. I've never said Latino, Latinx, Latino, like, you know, Puerto Rican, 
you know, Dominican, like you can't just say Dominican. Who says, like that's not, you know, I'm from the Bronx. My American behind from Florida yeah, but, says but when you're from the Bronx, Latino. You, mm, <laughs> you're from the Bronx, you put that d- sound on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so y'all had practice. Y'all had examples. <laughs> you could just go down the street and it was, you know, I was in Florida. And, you know, we have Spanish people, but they were speaking English. Um, too. I mean, so like, <laughs> I think the thing is, is that, as, and I have always hated the idea of a melting pot. Like I've hated a melting pot since I was a teen. And I think it's, it's, it's about being responsible for where people are coming from. So you had a right or an opportunity to say, how about we, I know I'm black. I know I talk on this topic, but maybe I'm not the one who should be featuring. Mm. Maybe we need to put someone who's a descendant of, Af- of slaves in this country in mm. the forefront. Maybe that's who needs this time to shine. Um, maybe we need to pour libations out for the people who aren't here no more. Maybe yeah. we need to talk about what Juneteenth signifies and the population in which that was. Like, I didn't see anything educational happening about mm-hmm. the population. No. It was, and I, I, so I was just very frustrated. It's one thing if non-Black and non-African American communities do something but then you have to do something responsibly. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not going to anybody's Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican Day Parade and sitting there and going, I'm going to be the speaker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unless we have a cross cultural conversation about the com- dynamics between communities, I'm not, go- I'm not nobody's speaker. But you know what, my homeboy, he the person, or if he, not him, he know the community better than I do, or all the, or all the Latino, they're not all Puerto Rican. But I know I used to work in a Latino theater. Like, yeah. I got a whole slew of people I can call. Yeah. For you. You know what I mean? If that's not my place. And I think a lot of people felt like just because they were brown, it was their place. Yeah. And and they weren't. And, and I mean, I, I think culture. I think one of the things is that our society inveigles our um <laughs> our perception. <laughs> um, to get us to, you know, kind of just blend the the line or it, it, it's, I'm trying to think of how, I, I guess it goes back to, you know, if you, if you just unify it, it just blurs any type of distinction that mm-hmm. you have to address. So it's like, okay, well, you know, this person right here won a scholarship of of this and they're black or this is, this person is black and this person is black, but then that, okay, what is their lineage? Okay. They, they were actually rich. They they came from a rich family over where their country and they came over here and yes, they, they have, they had those privileges, but what, what have we done? to get those people that were actually, you know, because of the things that the system did, how are we bringing them up to that, to that, that, that you, state, I status? Mean, sir, you're about to get me up in every feeling and fight. So I'm, a try, I'm trying not to. But we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, you know, cause I. But, but no, but I'm just saying in that, just in that same vein, it's like, it drives me nuts that everyone, that we use African-American, like it means black and it does not. Yeah. Because again, you get to be Nigerian American, American. You get to be Nigerian. You get to be Somalian American. You get to be Somali. Like you get to be all these things. Mm-hmm. And people like me, our story doesn't start at slavery, but it does. And we're ridiculous yeah. if we keep saying it doesn't. Because other than the ancestry test, and those always move because there's not enough Africans who have been tested to help you really ground where you are. So other than that, like there's literally we're not connected to that culture mm-hmm. and we're not connected to this culture. And yet yeah. we kept little bits and pieces of our culture that we could. That not or we created it. We, we yeah, created like, it. We created, from... ha- we created a bunch of our culture, but also like a lot of the ways that we ate food came from us. Yeah. Because we recognized the root that looked like something that was over back home and this used is... that. We used yeah. some of the spices and the ways in which we cook. So we kept the bits that we could. And that's yeah. the whole reason about AAB being an actual identified language because mm-hmm. the structure of our slang is very much tied to the continent mm-hmm. and it's tied to our history as a people 
So like, oh, I'm saying all that to say that we cannot forget those people who were here. We cannot forget Feliciana. We cannot forget Lucinda. Both of these are great, 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 great grandmothers of mine. Mm-hmm. I mean, even my great grandmother that I do remember, she was never even allowed to read when she was a child. So mm-hmm. I didn't understand why she couldn't read past 12th grade level. But that's because she wasn't allowed when yeah. she was a child. My godfather, who was my uncle, my granduncle, was born in Sharecropper's house. It's the same house in which he died in. Yeah. I mean, like that. Pro- in, in like this... the property's now gone but like all of that legacy and history exists and I think people need to remember that when we do these events and I don't mind celebrating I don't even care how you really celebrate I especially don't care how African Americans celebrate celebrate however you want you want a barbecue go ahead you want to throw a firecracker go ahead you want to sleep go ahead you want to cry go ahead you don't want this holiday great all of that I'm here for it because it's your holiday yeah. right yeah but when other people celebrate it they need to be responsible in acknowledging who this holiday was for why it was important that this was done and what that means for your community so yeah. you're not if you're an asian community and you're going to celebrate juneteenth that's wonderful because you're now going to bring awareness to this other culture mm-hmm. but do so responsibly Responsibly. talk about yeah. what african americans went through talk about how what they went through made way for what you came to do yeah and exactly. so i think that's the biggest thing and so it irritated me to watch the poetry community so do that um to watch them do it without really really thinking about who they were amplifying yeah and I, and I think it's because i mean because juneteenth has been something that we celebrated and now it's a, a holiday official holiday but it's just like martin luther king's birthday you know, it has been diluted and and created and changed into this thing where, like, we celebrate it with, we just celebrate it as, you know, this time to just. I, I don't I don't know like like I stopped going to the Martin Luther King parade because things started but, happening. But but I mean at least but it's. But at least that day is a day of service. It's National Day of Service too. So you mean it, getting off? Like no, Martin Luther King Day is. Also, oh, it's National Day. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So like you can Google service projects in your city that you can do. Yeah. That you can do. So yeah. at least like even if a lot of people who were less melanated like to quote all these great things about him, not realizing that he was probably their British biggest critic, and not remembering that they're the ones who imprisoned him. Yeah. You're saying you killed him essentially, right? Like, you know, they yep. actually love him because he's still better than Malcolm. Um, so all of that mess. Um, you still at least can do something of service for the community. That is yeah. not going away, you know. I think yeah. here we don't know how to celebrate this because we're not Texas, and Texas is the only ones who've really been celebrating it for the longest. But like then learn how to celebrate it. Don't just do something charge a fee to show up and not even amplify the right people yeah. or amplify the right culture. We want to do something about African-Americans. I best to not be seeing salsa dancing as the class. You know what I mean? Just, 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 just give me the culture. <laughs> <laughs> just, just give me the culture, please. Just. Just give me the culture so, and how it's how it's how it is. So I just think truth. I think so just to just to go to the frustrations and to bring it back to the arts because it is an arts community. Yeah, I think we as artists need to be very cautious and aware of how we appropriate, celebrate, and acknowledge and move around these cultural issues, thoughts, concerns. Yes, yeah. I'm about that money. Yes, I want to get paid just like anybody else. Yes, I am getting paid. I just don't tell people what I'm doing when I'm moving. Um, but you need to, like I literally, in this time that we've been talking, just got talked to about possibly doing an event and getting paid for that one. Like that was a text message that was coming my way. Hey, do you want to possibly do this? <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Ask my name. I will memorize whatever I need to do. I will do whatever I need to do. <laughs> person it needs to be to be to yeah i don't care how much 
with that person because I know who that other person is. They don't know who I am, but we don't work together in the past too. So I'm like, yes. Yeah. So you make these moves, but like you have to be responsible about the mm. moves you're making. And you can't just co-opt. Like I'm even careful when I'm using any part of Spanish in my stuff. Yeah. Because I'm not trying to say it's really like the Bronx is my people, but the in the Heights is not me. I'm not from the Heights, even if the Bronx is just like a bigger Heights. Yeah. That's not, it's not me. And I own that. Even if it feels familiar, even if it feels like home, even if it is a mix of people in the Heights, because the mm. Heights is not just Latino either. It's not just Dominican. My friends who are white have lived there for two to three decades already too. You know, like yeah. the Heights mixing pot. And I just think like people need to be sensitive to yeah. where you're stepping in. And as artists, we are the heart and the not even the heart, the we are the um conscience of society. Of society. If we don't yeah. do this correctly, if we don't move correctly, there's no reason for anyone else to move correctly. So we need to watch how we move, especially the yeah. things we do. Yeah. So, so I realized. You know, we've gotten this far we really quickly because we still we got two more things to really do, right? Yeah. But there's a, I put a third thing in there because I realized he, if you're new to this, you don't know us. So mm. we need to give a super short description of who we are. Okay. So, so um, Tony, as, as I said at the beginning, Tony, the entrepreneur poet, I am originally from Florida. Um, I moved here to go to school here columbia university graduated majored in architecture i have that creative visual art side and i discovered open mics up here in 2018 as i was going through a tumultuous time in my life and poetry became my therapy and i started an open mic um after the open mic that I was going to for therapy closed down. <laughs> so I'm one that, you know, if something needs, if, if there's a need, then I try to provide the, the you know, the solution. So started the open mic in, in, that, in that experience, I, I realized how connected we are as creatives. And so I've been on that, that path ever since to create connections, create experiences, um, for for people and I do that by way of entrepreneurial ventures so um, you can find all of them at tonyinc.com t-o-n-i-i-i-n-c.com and um, yeah so that's me I'm I'm he's being modest you know, I like because long walks I told, on the beach what what'd you say <laughs> I'm saying he's being modest because I told him to be brief but yeah he's an author he's a publisher well, he runs a publishing company and he's the founder of Poetics University and he's like an influencer and he has a clothing line. And like, if you're watching this video, you can see what he's done. So he, he's got a lot of things going on. Don't, don't let his um, shyness fool you. Mm -hmm. So I am Dara Kalima, the community poet named by an ex, but it still fit properly. Um, it was the one gift that he gave, maybe two, that um, were worth keeping. So we're actually friends, so I should be nicer about that. <laughs> um, but I am from the Bronx, born and raised on the playground. That's where I spent most of my days. Sorry, that was Philly. Um, so I'm from the Bronx. Um, and I, um, what do I have to say? Um, I'm from the Bronx, and I said that like three times already, right? Maybe that's the most important thing. I've been writing for a long time, depending how you count, over two decades, maybe almost three. The, that math could actually stand. Ooh. Oh, shucks. That really could be. I could have been writing for 30 years. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, that, that's probably right if you count school. I mean, no, we can't. Children. So me, me and my mom have a debate about when I started, whether it was seven or nine. And mm. even as I'm cataloging, you know, my poems right now, I ran into a poem that said I wrote it either seven or nine. Oh, wow. Um, and so if we do seven or nine, it's 30 years. Wow. Plus. 
So I'm old. So just so you didn't do the math, I'm old. Gosh. And you don't have to make it sound that bad. I'm, no, I, I'm just like, what? Yeah. The calculations is what got me. Yeah, because 30 years from seven or nine is 37 or 39. Okay, got it. Okay, I, I went, I, I don't know why I went. A is that one. right, math? Seven or nine, 37 or 39. That's 30 years more. Than yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Okay. Sorry. No, I, I I went, I don't know why I went 40. Because I thought you, I thought I'm you over 40. Me. Huh? I'm over 40. 30, 37. If I do, is this bad math? This could Never be bad mind. math. I, I, don't, I don't even know what math you're doing. Because you just said 30, and then you said plus the seven or nine is 37 is 39. That's bad math. Why did you listen to me? I, I have no clue, but, but no, that makes 37, sense. 37 to 39. There you go. Go ahead. If I was he seven, long walks on the beach. If I was seven and you add 30 <laughs> years, you three? would have to be 37, right? I am doing good math. If you were seven and you added 30 years, you'd be 37. Yeah. If you were nine and you added 30 years, you'd be 39. Yeah. yeah. So I've been writing for 30 plus years to finish oh okay which way that math comes out i thought you were saying exactly 30 no okay that's not what i'm saying 30 plus years got you because i'm over 40 don't look it thank you that's why because i had the grays covered up with the whole <laughs> um every other color but gray <laughs> you gotta start full with every color but Black gray. <laughs> I mean, otherwise, if he's looking serious, I looked in the mirror the other day and I was like, "Ooh." I keep saying okay, this in my come, come, years. Come, come through with that, um, uh, that Tony Morrison. Come on, come so on. The, yes, but come like through with that, um, what's her name, Angela Bassett from Wakanda. Come on, grades are disrespectful because they don't want to just do the thing that the the black no, people they, they like the, they like they are the, like, oh, you want me to go over here? I'm going to go over there because I, I saw that thing. That thing was cooler. Like that's the grades. The grades don't, they, they don't, they don't respect you. And so because they don't respect you is these are some hard Obama years. I just feel like I'm in my Obama years. Cause remember what he looked like when he went in yep, yep. and what he looked like when he went out. Yep. I'm totally in that. So wait, I still didn't say anything about myself. So I'm directly, my, I'm from the Bronx. I clearly am graying. Um, I'm in my Obama years. I've been writing for over 30 years. I have four books to my name, three of which are poetry. Um, and I work with Tony on a lot of things, including the school, including the, um, well, somewhat soon to be his publishing company. And then I also apparently just checked those teaching artists on my bio. I'm about to add a new page to my website that's just like my resume. Mm. So that people could be like, oh, she done did some stuff. I think that's, so that's going to have to be next. <laughs> scroll. <laughs> Word. Word. Oh, um, we'll but yeah, scroll. I just, just checked off teaching artists at a school in Jersey. And that just gave me my whole life. So I do a lot. I do a lot. And I do it for the community. But I am a, um, I'm a poet. I'm a, I'm an advocate. I, I provide people information on how to write. And that's what I'll be doing with um, Tony soon. Um, so Tony and I are like stuck together for the rest of our lives. He didn't know it when he let me join him. Um, he just has no choice now. So, but see, now you see why we are a good match, which is crazy. And I'm not trying to talk any bad into the situation, right? But you know, like, Leos and Virgos can't date because they're too close to each other. Not that we're dating. We're never doing that, right? Okay. But like, we're too close in sign. So that's the reason you can't date the book and signs of you because usually you end up irritating each other really horribly. Oh. Yeah, it's a that whole thing. That explains a lot. <laughs> yes. But go ahead with your brief. So, uh, <laughs> so my your fire brief. and your yeah. earth. That, that would have been a brief introduction. I'm fire and she's earth. <laughs> I'm earth and she's fire. But like, but like we have such an amazing rapport, which is why we brought you words to words, because we have this. And people will just laugh at us. Like they thought we knew each other in real life. We just met For the on Juneteenth. <laughs> <laughs> just so, saw each other physically physically exactly. in person, but we've been working for a year now. So so but the vibes so, are real. 
So we want to share that with you so that you can sit here and be like, wow, these two, they, they, <laughs> they need help. Um, <laughs> yes. You may need a mediator at some point, but that's <laughs> that. So I'm done with my brief bio, but it was, sorry, it wasn't brief. I mean, yeah. when you get to the meat of, about myself, it was brief. Enough said. <laughs> She's the type that eats the size, the dessert and everything before she gets to the meat, okay? You know, there's different there's different types of people that eat, you know. I start off with fries first. Do you eat the burger or the fries first? I eat I all eat. of my fries before I ever touch the burger. Can't. See, you, you eat the fries. You eat one fry just to taste it, how good it is, and then you eat the burger, and then I you eat, eat a, the fries. <laughs> I need a little bit of each at the end. Exactly. You you have to have the both tastes on, on the palate. No, I get done with one taste. I'm done. Okay, now let me get the other it's not, one. <laughs> it's not about the taste. It's about having that final moment with the food. So I want to have that. It is the taste, but it's not about the taste. It's about like, <laughs> this is the last one of the, this is the last fry. So let me enjoy this last fry. Exactly. And this is the last burger, but I always leave it with the thing that I like the most. So you know how you know I didn't like something? It's the first thing off my plate. Wow. I'm like, so, oh, I hate this. Get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you should pay attention to how you, how you write, but also pay attention to how you eat. It, 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 it says a lot about how you write too, just to tie this back into writing. <laughs> oh, so we are at one of the my favorite parts of the show, which is called Top of the Dome. Top of the Dome. For some of you, you actually know what this means. But if you don't, this means that we are doing an impromptu poem. And I gave a hint at See, the beginning. Here's the thing. Tony enveigled me to participate in such activities. <laughs> oh, I got that enveigled in. You better save it because you have to do it now again, too. So, so this segment is where we actually have five random words that came from today's podcast, plus the word of the episode, which is enveigled. So... We are going to now announce the words, and these words are boat, motivation, audience, writing, and words, and then adding on in bagel on top of that. So who goes first? Rock, My paper, paper scissors, 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 shoot. shoot. Oh, darn it. I got the scissors. <laughs> that means I win. Does winning mean that you go first because you lost? Can I can I cheat and just tell you, since you don't know the rules, <laughs> can I just tell you that it means that you go? <laughs> you won, so you go. Can I cheat? <laughs> okay, so normally it means that the other person that lost has to go first because so then, yeah, you usually go. wants to go first. Um, unless it was a, a, you know, a kickoff, you know, if you want the ball first, you usually you win the toss and you, you get the, the ball first, but I'll go into this. <clears throat> My mind is staying afloat. Despite my lack of motivation, stuck without a paddle on this boat. My heart beats with a rhythm to instruments that have lost their orchestra and their audience. No one applauding, just silence. But if I could only inveigle my way into writing again and grab my pen and stop looking outside at this lake, but first look within and then take words and write them to form other words and as words meet words I then reach 
silence again. But my words speak at volumes that no speaker can tweak or repeat. So that is why I write. I write for my day to eventually turn to night and my night to not have fright, but dreams that by the time that it is day, I can say, I wrote. And this poem will be exactly the words that I quote. Thank you. Wait, did you say audience? Yeah, I said audience. Well, my heart beats out, uh, my, audience, my heart beats to a rhythm with a rhythm hold on to, with a rhythm but lacks instruments that in the audience and then I okay. said no applauding and okay whatever <laughs> your turn your turn your turn I'm not ready <laughs> this is his thing he likes to force people into do, like, if I'm they... doing those introductions just just give me the poem <laughs> Just give me the poem. Stop trying to inveigle more time out of me. <laughs> I hate you. So as I try to crack my knuckles and prepare, you know, I feel as if I am on a boat floating with no sail on a sea of words moving with the rhythm as they move and I keep trying to fish some out but they are not catching my hook. It is a battle and we are fighting and I feel like I'm listlessly floating. No direction or oar, no steering my way. And even there, I've lost my way. I have no motivation to figure out how to win this game. I keep begging. I'm even trying to inveigle some words to jump into my boat with me so that we can go. I have an audience to please, but words just keep saying no. And I am still just floating on this boat, hoping, looking, trying to write something I should be writing. That's what we writers do. It's what poets do, but words keep saying, no, not today. It's a good thing I'm patient. Fishing takes time. I leave my hook in the water and wait. Snap, 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 snappity, dappity, dap. Wow. <laughs> What a way to end our episode. Wow. Man, I just want to say thank you to all of you who stuck with us through all these crazy times where as one word in bagel led to all of these other words, you know, for those of you who, who, who just needed a laugh, I hope that that was what you got today. And if you need it even more, I hope you also receive a little bit more for your writing experience and your writing career. Um, so I this, just want to. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. You were you gonna do it? Or, I mean, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I just wanted to remind everyone that this episode, now named "Just Give Me the Poem," was made possible by our sponsor, Dainty. Co. Dainty. Go get you some tea because it'll change your life. I, I, like I said, I'm mad that I'm here in Wisconsin without my six vials, my five vials, but, and that's the original one. That's the guns, the gun, gun. Guns gun, and roses. Guns and roses, yes. It is so good. I actually really like it more than the second one, but I like the second one too. I just have to spend some time with it. Um, Gotta learn but, those, those, those ingredients. One yeah, by I like one. the mint of the, um, I just want more minute. Um, anyway, so get you some dainty tea, some dainty cold tea. Um, and I just want to also let you know that the 
the the song our theme song that you heard and you will hear again shortly is brought to you by the skills of eric ty scott the dj white um he is a colleague of mine and he makes dope music so i'm actually we're probably gonna start hearing this we'll start getting ready to go out um a little bit but we just want to let you know we appreciate you for joining us um and i am and i'm tony two i entrepreneur poet and like i said we are the host of this um if you want to give us a word of the day a word of the episode if you want to share your frustrations or you have poet highlights that you want to share with us visit us on um, any of our social media or on our website. Um, just follow the link that we will provide you to. Find us at Word to Words. You find that everywhere. And let us know what your words are. And if you want us to give you some advice, let us know what you have some questions about. That mm -hmm. way, this has been Word to Words. We will see you next month.